Hey everyone, it's Technic Builder. This is the third video I'm making on my giant mobile crane. Um, I realized I say um and so a lot, so I'm really going to try to work on that this time. And I actually wrote some talking points. Uh, so, I was out of town for five days over Thanksgiving, so I haven't done as much as I would hope to, but I mean, isn't that the story with everyone? Uh, what you're looking at is three pretty much completed axles, and then axle number four. This is the front, this will eventually will be the front of the mobile crane, this is the rear. Um, so each one of these is spaced 15 studs apart. Oh yeah, and here's my fancy red uh, uh, chopstick uh, pointer. Uh, but this one gives me an extra nine studs between it. And the reason for that is that's where the um, pistons of the outriggers are gonna go. So here, again, will be the center of the vehicle. It'll be a larger, uh, you can't see where I'm pointing. Uh, over here will be the center of the vehicle. That'll be a large opening there. That's where the uh, tower will basically mount. And that's where the outriggers uh, will have their pivots. So all the way from here, an outrigger will come up. It'll sit on the top of the structure. And then it'll come down into um, the pistons. And I, you know, some people really want to see pneumatics, but I don't think I'll be able to do that. Um, I actually, I do want this to be able to lift itself up off the ground, even if I have to use extras of these at the front and rear of the vehicle. Um, I just don't think pneumatics are going to do it, plus they're not going to hold, whereas these are going to come up and they're going to hold. Now, the rig on top is just, you know, very preliminary. I just wanted to see how worm gears would work um, in this scenario. Yes, it turns pretty slowly, but if you're going to produce a lot of torque, well, that's what you need. But, you know, just to get a sense of the scale of the vehicle, now that I've got a little bit more done, imagine a pivot here, you know, and then the outrigger coming all the way out and then extending out. You can't even see it, it'd be off camera. Um, so from one far end to the other far end of the out, of another outrigger would probably be over a meter. So, you know, pretty big, whatever. <laughs> um, so, do, 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 do. Oh, there I'm saying so again. Uh, shifting. Um, here, let me pop this off. I just put on this on here for kind of display purposes. It kind of tightens everything up. But for what I want to show you, whoop, uh, we're not going to need that. When all the pins are in there, that really makes the structure very rigid. Um, right now, you can see there's curvature when you, of course it's not going to be stiff over here, but you know, there's curvature when you start to pick it up, I pick it up from here, that's not so bad. But once you put that on the top, it, it really stiffens everything up. Um, so the shifting of the, let me zoom in a bit, of the steering was done by this um, center, oh, what would you say it? Well, a slidey thing, okay? And previously I was only using five and a half length axles in here, and I had them connected uh, end to end with just two L axle joiners. Um, <clears throat> these guys. But what I discovered is when you're using the 5.5 length axles, they've got the little ring around the one stud section, and when you insert it into one of these joiners, you know the spacing is off a little bit. So you know, from the first one to the last one, you know, the last one was already off by maybe a millimeter and a half. And, you know, given the tolerances of the transmission rings, you know, the, by the time you got to the end of the vehicle, it, the, sh it, the shift would be way off. Um, I ditched the 5.5 length axles. I went to just a six and a seven. Um, and then those are too short because <laughs> when you insert a six or seven length axle into one of these, it goes in, well, I'm not going to say too far. It's just a, a seven stud axle is, I don't know, maybe 0.5 millimeters short of a full seven studs. And obviously that's, you know, if you have it inserted into something seven studs wide, no end will poke out either side. So, you know, that's a good thing to have, um, you know, when I, or what would I say for normal building, but when you're aligning axles into end and you need the length to be exact, that didn't work. I thought about breaking Lego code and jamming like paper down in there to give me spacing. Um, I 
you know, I thought about just trying to use uh, lift arms directly connected, but there's no space. It looks like there's space, but once you put the wheels on, um, there's no space. So what I ended up having to do was make these um, things out of two length, uh, what would you say, uh, half width lift, lift arms. They're kind of a pain to make, they're a pain to press on there, but let's see, if we zoom way in on one of them, Okay, yeah, here you see just a little bit of axle sticking out. That's absolutely necessary to keep the spacing correct um, from the front of the vehicle to the end. Um, so <clears throat> this is four axles, it will be five. You know, there'll be a fifth axle over here. And I think the way that I'm gonna shift these is by having a pneumatic cylinder on one side and then a pneumatic cylinder right here. I know people like pneumatic functions. I mean, I think they're kind of neat as well. Uh, but I do think pneumatics would be the most appropriate way to shift that, and it would be very easy for me to run pneumatic tubing uh, through the vehicle. Plus, this does not have to span the entire vehicle. I want to keep this center area as open as possible. I'm going to need a lot of space right here. So I'll have a cylinder here, but then, you know, I don't know, 20 studs over, I'll have another cylinder um, to shift the rear portion of the vehicle. So that's, you know, I spent a lot of time just trying to figure that out and get that spacing right and it was technically this is an illegal construction because i've got the axles coming from the center of these frames so i did have to bend them a bit to get it to get them in not that badly but you know if you're a purist it would uh still make you cringe so <clears throat> all right oh what else did i want to talk about ah oh, the gearing of the steering so i had said before I didn't really do any gear calculations, and uh, yeah, I definitely realized, you know, winging it was not the way to go. Um, let's see, what things am I going to change? I talked about how I have this clutch gear to help me realign gears, but then I remembered, you just saw me move the axles back and forth. If I just shift this to halfway such that neither of the clutch gears are engaged, I mean, I can move each one individually. So if they do get off, I can just reset them by hand. Um, I'd hate to have these slipping when they're not supposed to, because then that would throw off all the crab steering. It'd be fixable, but it just wouldn't crab steer correctly, and that just wouldn't look as cool. <laughs> so, um, secondly, I want to avoid using 24 tooth gears um, anywhere on the bottom, so that includes the clutch gear. Part of that is I need to put some bracing along the, the length of the vehicle. Um, if I have bracing that goes down the center, I can't have any 24 tooth gears there like this guy, it, it gets in the way. Um, and then secondly, I can get tighter ratios. You know, these three axles are all very close together, so they should have very tight ratios. Uh, the two axles in the front of the vehicle, you know, they'll jump up in ratios because uh, they're further away from the center of the turning point of the vehicle, but uh, they still need to have close ratios and I can do that with the 16 and 20 tooth gears, um, the 12 to 24, it's just too big of a jump. Even if I gear up on one, gear down on the other, the ratios don't work right. So, well, I guess I'd say I'll be replacing a lot of these gears, um, and I'll actually have to gear down <laughs> for the middle six axles. Um, it's not really that big of a deal, I've already figured it out but just have to go back and change that stuff. So uh, I did set up a little test. I have a variable speed remote. I've got a large motor directly uh, geared up to this with no gear reduction. So the fact that it can still even turn it, you know, it's not really fussing about it. Um, obviously I'll have those geared down, um, but uh, so that was in regular steering mode. And if you'll notice, Hey, let's see again look at how much further this one comes out than the rest that's just too far so I'll be changing those ratios um, well, and then I pushed it out because there's nothing holding it there <laughs> but uh it is fun to watch the gears run isn't it I enjoy gears um hey this video is getting kind of long uh really the last thing I wanted to talk about was I found out how to route my pneumatic tubing through the vehicle. It's going to go up to the top and then it's going to run through the plates on the top. So yay, I figured that out. And uh, well, I think that's it. Hopefully I'll have five axles completed um, the next time you see me. Oh, drive motors go here 
and this will be all empty and well that's close to 10 minutes all right see ya